Episode 3, Folklore. Silver Knight's back. <coughs> Lucky for him, he was only data drained by a weakened version of the Twilight Bracelet, so he woke up in a very short amount of time compared to future characters in the series who will go into a coma for months. Silver Knight kneels to his queen and says that his failure was an embarrassment for someone working with system administration. And this is the first sign that there is a misunderstanding between Subaru and the Crimson Knights. The Crimson Knights have gotten so deep into their roleplay that they seem to have appointed themselves as admins. If you've ever played an MMO, you know that this shit doesn't fly. System admins are usually actual employees of the company, and while there are community managers who are taken in from the player base, even they have limited power. Subaru, for instance, would be the equivalent of a community manager. No real power, but she's taken it upon herself to help players whenever there is a dispute. However, it is a thankless job, so the knights are starting to feel like doing this while not getting anything makes what they do purposeless. Basically, their roleplaying has become a job, and honor and justice just isn't that much of an incentive, except for Silver Knight, who has other reasons that will become more apparent later. So the question becomes, what is the purpose of the Crimson Knights if we have no authority? And Subaru can't really answer this because she's asking herself the very same question. Nevertheless, someone attacked her knights, so they have to find Tsukasa and figure out what happened. Over in Theta Server, Bear shares his story about what happened the day before with BT. It's an unbelievable story that BT has a hard time taking seriously, but it does intrigue her for another reason. The Key of the Twilight. This mythical item is rumored to have the ability to bypass the rules of the system. The existence or non-existence of this item becomes the biggest catalyst for almost every character in the show's actions. BT, for example, cares less about Tsukasa and more about the possibility of the item existing. We're going to have a lot of conversations between BT and Bear, and they are definitely the intellectual center of the show. Bear is smarter in common sense and empathy, while BT is more cunning and realistic. So a character like BT asking about an item that has every reason to not exist comes from a logical place. If a character exists that can transcend the system, and there is a rumor that is just as impossible with the exact same description, it would only be logical to ask if they are one and the same. Bear insists that the key is just a baseless rumor, but he knows he can't completely dismiss it. He decides that no matter what the reason is, they just don't have enough information. And that's what all these conversations will usually be about. Remember when I said that the conversations in Dot .hack are esoteric? Well, that might not have been exactly right. More that most of the conversations will essentially be information consolidation, philosophical ramblings, and character development. And this is where I think a lot of the confusion with the show comes from. Every member of the cast has different pieces of information, and they are tangentially trying to solve the mystery in their own ways. The pacing of the show is entirely dependent on who knows what at what time, and the location and mental state of Tsukasa. All these plot threads combined makes the point of the conversations hard to follow, especially if you are bored with the snail's pace of the plot. For example, the next scene we have Sora, who saw Tsukasa disappear, and Subaru, who is looking for information on Tsukasa's whereabouts because of what happened to Silver Knight. A fun foreshadowing of who Sora is in real life, he said that it's weird to be called Mr. Sora. More on that another time, but it, you can just fucking google it if you're impatient. He is actually cunning in his own way, just like BT, but fathoms more ruthless in his methods. He will threaten, manipulate, lie, and PK anyone to get what he wants. In this case, all he does is mention the key of the twilight, and the reaction he gets tells him more about what she knows. Welcome back to the sidebar, where we talk about tangential stuff. It's at this point that I want to recognize the different tiers of information that each character has. Tier 1. Direct confrontations between characters. These will be most of the conversations where the cast learns more about each other and consolidate information about the mystery depending on what they are willing to reveal. Tier 2, the message board, where all characters share rumors, bounties, warnings, and even news articles about each other that pertains to the world. Every character has access to this information, with the exception of Tsukasa. Tier 3 is the official or unofficial CyberConnect information. There are several characters who have access to information that normal players do not have. Some of this information is untrustworthy because CyberConnect has no obligation to be honest with anyone, and will routinely lie to their player base if they think it could hurt them. Unofficial information is info from CC Corp that has gotten through questionable sources. More on that later. And our final tier is God Tier. 
what Morgana knows slash can know, which will occasionally affect the entire mystery and cause the entire cast to change. So, Sora knows very little at this point, but he is pulled by his boundless curiosity to find out. He saw Tsukasa disappear and heard the rumors about a wave master who defeated Silver Knight. He also knows about the Key of the Twilight, like everyone else. So he asks Subaru, the leader of the Crimson Knights, who has direct information from CC Corp about it. He, like BT, sees that something impossible has happened in the game, which makes him consider this legendary item actually existing. So why would he ask her about this? Well, he is a character who knows how to manipulate people. He knows that if he puts the idea of the Key of the Twilight being related to Sakasa in her head, he will be able to get more information about who he is. He doesn't have to tell her that he's also just guessing. She now has it in her mind, and she is the leader of the Crimson Knights. So if she has that in her mind, and is willing to share information with Sora, he will get closer to learning the truth. Subaru, on the other hand, now knows that the Key of the Twilight is involved in this, and while she doesn't believe it exists, she can't ignore what she has heard. And this is a feeling that will be constant with all the dot hackers. Even if they don't believe the key exists, they can't help but imagine the possibility of its existence and pursue it, even if they don't want it. Whether the key exists or not, what everyone knows is, is that Tsukasa is at the center of it. So in this battle of information, the one who has the most access to Tsukasa is the closest to the answer. And that's where Mimiru comes in. She is the character who is closest to Tsukasa. We know this because last episode she is the only one who gets called by Tsukasa, and this is what makes Mimiru important. See, she isn't the smartest, the strongest, and usually is stuck waiting for everyone else to solve the major issues. What she does bring to the table is her honesty. She wears her emotions on her sleeve and is the first person to genuinely be concerned about Tsukasa. That honesty is important to him because he distrusts most people specifically adult, and always assumes that when someone is being nice to you, they want something from you. So while Mimiru is essentially the most useless of the cast, she has the most access to Tsukasa. Thus, she simultaneously has the best chance to gain the most important information and the least chance of being able to use that information. Speaking of Tsukasa, he is with Aura, doing exactly what Morgana wants him to do. Just exist. He stares at her and remembers a moment from his past. We see him taking care of a kitten, feeding it milk, until presumably his father shows up and takes the cat away. The link between this scene and Aura is that he has a desire to be needed. It's a very similar situation to Shinji Ikari from Eva, whose desire to be needed drove him to pilot the Evangelion. What makes this situation different is that instead of Shinji, who strove to prove that he is needed only to get shut down, Tsukasa is told exactly what he wants to hear from Morgana. He is given that positive feedback, and is contented for the moment. It's only episode 3, and he is happy to be needed. Unfortunately, what happens next makes the flow of information stumble. See, being with Tsukasa, who is naturally a difficult person to be friends with, is stressing Mimiru out. She finally got in contact with Tsukasa, but doesn't want to go, because she knows they will just argue again. So she gets the idea of sending Bear instead, thinking that he will be able to talk with him. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. In a rare scene of frustration from Bear, he completely shuts down Tsukasa, because he at this point in time doesn't understand the type of person he is. Tsukasa wanted to tell Mimiru that he is in full control of the Guardian, so it's safe to talk to him again. Bear doesn't care about that, and essentially gets impatient with Tsukasa and snaps at him, which makes sense. He was attacked by the Guardian the day before, and could have actually gotten hurt. So to him, Tsukasa has been nothing but a pain in the ass, especially because of how difficult he is to talk to. Sidebar again, intellectual consistency. I want to stress that the action of this show comes from the information gathering and the hyper-realistic dialogue. A big part of that realism comes from the intellectual consistency of characters. So, what do I mean by intellectual consistency? I mean that the actions of the characters flow logically from one action to another. There is no randomness. Tsukasa is a frustrating character to watch, but he is very intellectually consistent. So when he does something that might be considered annoying or frustrating, it comes from a previously foreshadowed character aspect. In this case, he leaves immediately after Bear snaps at him. Which makes sense, because at this point, he is the most free he's ever felt, and doesn't feel like he has to listen to another adult lecture him. He wanted to see Mimiru, and her not showing up stings him a bit. 
He still doesn't trust Bear, and obviously Bear doesn't give a shit about his pet, which harkens back to the flashback with his father, so why should he give a shit about Bear? So he leaves. Bear fucked up, and he knows it. He walks out of the cathedral and tells Mimiru that he fucked up, and decides that something has to be done. Remember, even if Tsukasa is a victim, he is also dangerous. And if they leave him to his own devices, someone else might get hurt. So, Bear and Mimiru call Silver Knight, Subaru, and BT to again consolidate information with each other. Bear knows that if anyone could get player information, it would be Subaru. They need to find who Tsukasa is and see if he really can't log out. Subaru, however, says no because again, she is just a community manager. Personal data is out of her reach. Or at least she feels like it should be. They also want to make sure that the Crimson Knights know that even though it is Tsukasa who attacked Silver Knight, he might also be a victim, and that the real perpetrator is, as far as they know, Maka the Cat. They have no information on him, so again, all roads lead to Tsukasa. Bear leaves it to Subaru to decide when the line needs to be crossed. BT and Sora, however, have different agendas. The key of the Twilight. No one has information on this, but just BT mentioning it gives them what is essentially an official response from CyberConnect in the form of Subaru denying its existence. This is basically the declaration of the race to solve the mystery. All the roads lead to the same place. Sora and BT will look for the key of the twilight, Subaru will look for information on Tsukasa's location, Bear and Mimiru will look for a way to free Tsukasa. And that's episode 3. If you're still with me, I'd just like to thank you for watching. I know it can be long-winded, but I made these videos this way because I enjoy long-form content. I routinely go to sleep listening to long-form analysis videos. It's basically my white noise. So I wanted to make one crazy long project so I can listen to it for hours later. If you're with me this far, I hope you stick around. And if you enjoy what I do, consider throwing me a buck on my Patreon. And I'll see you in the next one.